Well, my precious family, you are all an inspiration to me. I love reading your comments about your struggles and victories. It makes this job so very edifying and worthwhile. So I'm very excited to share with you the beautiful victory your prayers have won. The individual that used to work for us and that we falsely accused of using witchcraft, thanks to your prayers and God's intervention, has taken off on the mission of God's heart for them and their lives. They've found their calling and been given a vision their heart resounds to. Do you know how magnificent it is when a soul finds the path for their lives that God intended? Do you know how very troubling it is to walk without purpose, without passion, blindly living from day to day? I did it for 40 years, so I do know. Well, to make a long story short, one of our listeners, by the inspiration of Holy Spirit, thank you, whoever you are, <laughs> bought a bunch of winter coats for kids large sizes which were really needed since the 14-year-olds on the reservation are wearing men's large sizes. Well, I have no connections with the Taos Pueblo, really, since our change in assistance. I didn't know what to do with the jackets. The Lord moved on my heart to give them to the person who used to work with us. They are very well connected with the community and the Pueblo. I was also impressed to give them a donation. Oh, God is so good. And I couldn't figure out why. So I went over to their house, not even knowing if they would open the door. But their mother did and went to get them. I don't know how to describe how I felt when this person came out. Here is someone who'd been falsely accused of witchcraft, on top of other things that caused us to part ways. I was thinking, how do I really feel about them after all of that? All I could think of was shame for having believed a very dark lie against them. The enemy must really hate this person because they have been maligned from the very early days of working with me. But deep in my heart, I just couldn't connect with what was told to me by a person who was launching out into the deep waters of spiritual warfare and discernment. Rather, I saw the earmarks of the enemy's insinuations. On the other hand, there was an issue brewing that eventually would have to be addressed. I knew something wasn't quite right because the Lord kept telling me that there was a problem, but to hold off on calling it until he told me to move forward on December 8th. But when I saw them come to the door, my heart just melted. I rather surprised myself that I did indeed love them, not just by a decision of the will, but from the heart. So I gave them the coats and the donation, and we talked. Only God could bring a sweet, safe spirit into a situation like this. And I was so happy to find out why the Lord told me to give them a donation. They had begun an endeavor to help the poor in every possible way. Food, clothing, utilities, firewood, school books, and every need you can imagine that poor families have. The community had responded unusually well to them, and it was obvious this was a dream sent by God that was meant to come true. The Spirit was so sweet in those moments that I knew positively this person was not involved in cursing. In fact, I apologized to them because I thought they might have heard those messages and been hurt. And they answered that they had been listening to the messages and knew that I had confessed my mistake and they weren't upset with me. In fact, they listed us as a spiritual resource for those looking for God's comfort and love. There were positively no undercurrents of malice. In fact, the Spirit of the Lord was so healing and comforting, I just about started crying. What a tremendous thing the Lord did for us. And I have to tell you, heart dwellers, it's your prayers that melted an iceberg that had been between us. 
And as far as their mission goes, your prayers help them strike out and live God's will for their lives. After working with them for several months, the anointing was very, very visible. And they just had a knack for finding people who really had needs. It was a beautiful thing and was one of the things I loved about this person as far as them being well suited to work with us. So confronting all the evil that was necessary and because you responded from grace rather than from the flesh, another soul has found God's purpose and meaning to their lives. Now, I have to confess I've greatly struggled with having to confront evil in any messages because I want to always be positive and uplifting. I hate bringing up the dark things in life. So I told the Lord, why can't we just dance the night away and share our love with the channel, encouraging them that you're waiting for them? And Jesus began to speak to me. Claire, there are times you must address this. I know you hate it. I know you are fearful of what you will start to feel, say, or do. But you must learn the art of loving the ugly. What I mean is that in order to deal with the truth, falsehood must be measured, weighed, and condemned. There's nothing pretty about this process. But if your heart is loving, with no admixture of self-promotion, self-interest, only concerned with truth, you will do well and set the stage for truth to be honored above personal interest and above any other value. So you see, you must deal with falsehood and sin just as I did, but not condemn the one who's fallen into its grips. No, your aim should be to throw a lifesaver to the sinking sinner and help them climb out of that pit. Once you've done that, you have done my will and you have done as I would do. So you see, there's no way out of having to speak up when I call you to. Now the problem comes when you want to be proven right or you overstate a simple truth which causes judgment and condemnation to enter in. The devils know this fine line very well and manipulate it skillfully. That is why you should be extra vigilant when receiving a message from me that deals with sin. The devils want you to cross the line over into judgment because that opens a big door that they can march into and attack you over. And one little insertion of theirs can cause you to go down the wrong path of thinking. So be extra vigilant, my love, not to depart from charity and your focus, which is to lift a sinner out of their morass of sin in the same way that I lift you when you fall. That said, I have called you to love even as you are loved. Therefore, these topics that spring from evil I address sparsely with the main objective of demonstrating my love and mercy for the one who falls, even as I have so often thrown that rope of grace to you when you fall into a cleverly laid trap. And then he laughed and said, or even an obvious trap, Yes, you should have known better, but what good does it do to point that out to you? What I must divert your attention to is hope. Why would anyone want to rise again from a fall if they had no hope? Hope springs from love and the knowledge of my goodness and that I came not to condemn the world, but to save the world. So as much as you fall, it's not really about your unworthiness and weaknesses, but about my unconditional love and the unending hope for a better future next time. These are the lessons you must carry forth in the midst of this dark world. Now, in this particular situation, you're dealing with a pit everyone falls into at one time or another. Fear is at the root of this. So confidence in me and my mercy is the antidote. 
You encourage the way I encourage you when you find yourself in a mess of this magnitude. Yes, it's complex. Yes, it's threatening. Yes, there's much self-interest that hinges on this. And yes, people can feel annihilated when they make a big mistake that hurts others. So here the Lord is talking about a discernment struggle I'm having. But all of you, my Christian children, must learn to fall gracefully and get up graciously restored by my forgiveness. And by the way, my antidote for your error. Do not be afraid to look at a situation and say, I made a mistake. Because when you get up, you will be that much more informed and skillful in the ways of discernment. There can be no growth without error. A soul must have the freedom to make a mistake and then be fully reinstated. A soul cannot grow if they avoid the possibility of making an error. I want you all to grow in discernment. That's why I make it so easy for Claire to recover herself after an error. I want you to be free to blow it without losing anything in my eyes. If your eyes are on men, you will not want to admit a failure because you know what men do to people who aren't perfect. They expose and tear them to pieces. Not in my kingdom. When someone makes an error, it's a sign of growth and reaching out beyond natural limits because you have confidence in my ability to lead you. Do you know that I set you up for mistakes sometimes? As it is written, I never tempt you, but I take my covering off of you and allow the devils to tempt you. And at that point I had an image of a little four-year-old girl walking on a city sidewalk beside her father, and she tripped over a crack in the sidewalk and fell and scraped her knee. He looked up at him and said, Why didn't you tell me, Daddy? And he answered her, Because you have to learn to watch where you're going and pick up your feet, little one. Jesus continued, I don't like scraped knees, I can tell you that. I hate any kind of suffering. But one must learn the hazards of walking before they are confronted with a 50-foot drop because a footbridge was out and they weren't paying attention. You should wear your failures like stripes because they tell the story of one who ventured out into new territory, one who was brave and took a bullet, wounded in combat, and completely restored, but now much more savvy. Wise as serpents, gentle as doves. That only happens when you are free to make a mistake and know that you'll be reinstated. And now you have all had a marvelous breakthrough. You prayed for the soul that caused so much disorder in Claire's mission. You thought this one was continuing by using evil forces against her. And then you found out that the person was innocent, and this was a mistake in discernment. But because of your prayers, this person has risen up from a fall and pursued a calling I planted deep in their hearts. This is good fruit from a bad situation, and it is my joy to turn evil to good. You have all handled this situation as I would have it, with prayer for the individual. And because of your prayers, I am raising them up to be a blessing to others. In heaven, you will take part in the blessings that they have made to others through their lifetime. No one is all good or all bad. All of you can be tempted. The question is, what's your price? Because you love me and rely on me and keep your tongue from evil, I protect you from a temptation that's just overpowering. But if you think yourself better than others, I allow bigger and bigger temptations in your lives to prove to you that you are not one whit holier than anyone else. This is a great leveling force. Everyone 
has a price. Everyone has weaknesses unless all their worth is in me. And that is something Peter found out about himself when I was arrested. I am all about hope and new beginnings once you have been through a trial. Trials prepare you for the next level and with promotion you are equipped with greater skill in overcoming yourself and the wiles of the enemy. So do not be afraid to fall. Never fear failure. Fear denial and spiritual blindness and an unteachable spirit with a bit in their mouths. This kind causes you to march around the same mountain in the wilderness over and over again, when you could have crossed over it and been in paradise in a day or two. Look to me, my children. Look to me. I am kind. I am a kind and tender father. I adore my little four-year-old. I just adore you. I walk with you everywhere. I defend you from the wicked ones more than you'll ever know. I delight in seeing you mature and grow up. But it pains me to see you making the same mistakes over and over again. So I grant you the treasure house of my graces to raise you up into your dreams. All is not lost when you fall, but Satan would have you think that way so you would run from me instead of to me. Don't be afraid to fall. I'm here by your side. I will pick you up, dust you off, and restore all of your dreams to you. I'm with you. I love you. I'm for you. I am a loving parent. <laughs>